Hi, Fenton. This is Michelle Papanicolau, Director of Curriculum and Instruction. Today, I would like to begin outlining our efforts towards equity more clearly, specifically in the area of professional development for our certified staff. Please allow me to preface this message. This is about our efforts with certified staff. We acknowledge that professional development must extend beyond this group and that all stakeholders in our school and community must be involved in this work and that we will grow. This work is good, but it only starts to scratch the surface. We have deep work and uncomfortable work ahead of us. This presentation won't capture all of the professional learning we've done over the years. There are many, many facets of our work that need to be addressed at any given time. But what we found is that the more we've done with equity, the better we're becoming at ensuring that what we do draws a clear and concise alignment back to equity-related goals. Our PD opportunities are possible because of the true commitment of our staff to grow and to actually take part in designing and implementing many of these opportunities. We have so many teachers who've stepped up outside of their regular teaching duties to help organize these opportunities and help their peers continue to grow. I am so grateful for all of the work of so many. Now I'm going to provide a brief overview of some grounding principles in our approach to professional learning. First of all, it's personalized. We try to do this with students and we also try to do this with our staff. We meet people where they're at in their learning. We try not to fire hose everybody with the same learning in the same way at the same time. And we also try not to provide training that has an intense amount of information and expectation in one sitting and just expect it to stick. We layer and we build on concepts, and we try to provide many opportunities that allow for reflection and most importantly, continuous improvement. As mentioned, we layer our professional learning. Some of our teachers have participated in intense inquiry-based programs that last anywhere from a year to 18 months. In other cases, we've provided whole group training with the whole staff, and we follow up with workshops that are either mandatory or optional. And we also provide specialized opportunities throughout the school year, like in-house book studies or attendance at outside conferences. Finally, our learning must be grounded in student voice. This is an extremely important principle that we've begun, but admittedly continued to grow. Our students' voice is absolutely necessary as we analyze our practices. We've allowed students to be interviewed during our professional development, sit on panels so we can hear their voice during our professional learning, and we found it to be very helpful. In this slide, I've categorized the opportunities by the facets of equity we've addressed so far. This doesn't cover everything involved in equity, but these are the ones that we have and continue to aim toward. The first one is opportunity and access. It's imperative to us that our students have access to rigorous courses and learning opportunities. We also want to ensure that they have all the resources needed to succeed. Finally, we want to ensure that students leave Fenton keenly aware of high wage careers and what it takes to secure those careers. We want students to be college ready because even if they access military or trade careers, the more aptitude they develop while they're here with us at Fenton, the better jobs they'll access in any sector. The second area is identity and voice. We want our students and staff to secure confidence in their identity and raise the voices of our students, especially those from marginalized populations. We have been working on this through the art of storytelling and allowing avenues for these stories to be shared this builds the most important value of empathy throughout our culture. The next area is teaching and learning. We are really working to ensure that our teaching and learning systems are personalized for our students and that relationships and partnerships between our students and teachers are at the center of our learning model. Ensuring opportunities for students to demonstrate their learning through their own passions and interests is an ultimate goal. Within our assessment systems, we want to ensure that our grade is focused on mastery of rigorous competencies and skills rather than point collecting and compliant behavior. We also want to be careful with our assessment and grading practices to avoid punitive motivation methods, especially with students with high levels of trauma. Finally, when we ensure that our measurement of learning is clear, the stronger systems of supports we can employ. 
The next area is anti-racism. We've begun this work. We have started to explore our implicit bias as a whole staff. We never want to subconsciously vary our expectations for students based on the color of their skin, their socioeconomic status, their gender, their immigration status, their sexual orientation, their religion, their ethnicity, and any and all other identity factors. It is important that we continue our work in this area, as sometimes our biases are invisible even to ourselves. We are also working toward ensuring that our curriculum materials and practices are culturally relevant and empowering to the students that we work with. We want them to see themselves in the content they're learning and be engaged through approaches that better match their cultural identity. Finally, social emotional learning. This has been a strong focus area in our organization for quite some time. We have rolled out RULER as a means of helping students develop social emotional intelligence. We have begun developing our trauma-informed lens and employing restorative practices. There is still plenty more work to do in these areas, but we've begun. I'd like to take you through a timeline that provides a sense of which organizations and consultants we've partnered with to begin this work of equity. We've developed some excellent expertise in-house with some of our certified staff but we are not shy to bring in experts when needed. In this case, we have found the approach of partnering with organizations fundamentally grounded in the work of equity to be invaluable to our progress. Our first partnership was with Equal Opportunity Schools. The actual programming started in 2015, but our partnership and conversations began with them in 2014. This was our first partnership with an organization fully committed to equity. Their lens is on access and opportunity, and more recently, supporting schools with cultural change related to equity. They want to ensure all students have access to rigorous coursework, and they explicitly help us analyze the enrollment of our students of color and low-income status in AP and other rigorous courses. They also led equity leadership labs the last two years during which some of our staff and administrators participated. This has been one of our intense year-long professional learning experience for some of our staff. Since their involvement, teachers who participated in this opportunity and are also part of our EOS committee have developed a number of professional learning opportunities to bring back to the staff. This semester, they're running a series of equity talks on critical issues of anti-racism. Melissa Toe, our SEL coordinator at the time, sat down with me and James on Tango and advocated for us to start a partnership with CASEL. This was a pivotal step in our journey toward equity. Ruth Cross, our consultant, is an amazingly wise lady who travels the globe helping organizations with social emotional learning. She helped us develop our SEL school-wide action plan and pointed us to some of our greatest resources. She brought us to the recommendation to read the book Culturally Relevant Teaching by Zaretta Hammond. We studied this book as a whole organization in 2019. Castle, through Ruth and the DuPage ROE, also hosts ongoing PLCs, professional learning communities, that bring schools throughout DuPage County together multiple times a year to learn from one another and support one another in this work. Some of the SEL committee members attend this regularly. Next, we started our work on competency-based education. We met Tony Reibel at Stevenson High School and later met Rose Colby. They have both helped us in this endeavor. After a visit to Stevenson High School, we learned how they were transforming their grading and assessment system to be one that focuses on partnerships between the teacher and the student and one that helps develop more independent and self-efficacious learners. We contracted with their Director of Assessment, Tony Rival, and he has helped us not only rethink our grading practices, but our overall curricular design. This design ensures that we focus on robust and rigorous skills or competencies rather than simple knowledge acquisition in determining a grade. It also moves us away from a traditional point collection system of grading, which most commonly focuses on compliant behavior and where sometimes Students have varying levels of how to gain that system. 
we move toward a system where every student is able to demonstrate their mastery of rigorous and robust competencies. Now, more recently, we brought on Rose Colby, who literally wrote the book on competency-based education. She's helping us critically review our curriculum and assessment design thus far, and is providing us guidance in our next phases of this work. Next, we started our work with LEAP Innovations. We had a leadership retreat when James first became superintendent and he brought in Albert Bertani. Al sat on Arnie Duncan's cabinet when he was here in Chicago. In a brief conversation with him about teaching and learning as it related to equity, he introduced me to a new organization called Leap Innovations. They are a research organization with a focus on personalized learning. They believe that through this teaching and learning methodology, we will truly impact the achievement gap. We have had two cohorts of teachers go through their intensive 18 month program to transform their teaching practices. We have seen some of the most truly innovative and reflective teaching arise during our partnership with LEAP. Later, we found an organization called Deeper Learning where we formed a partnership with High Tech High. They authored the movie Most Likely to Succeed and have a network of public charter schools throughout California. They believe that through project-based learning, a form of personalized learning, that we can close the achievement gap and truly engage our students in meaningful learning. We see this as a rigorous way to engage our students in their learning and that it can allow them to be more directly involved with their communities. We have had High Tech High out to Fenton multiple times. They even hosted a design camp last summer here at Fenton where educators from as far as China came to learn with us. Next, the SEL committee again advocated to take SEL to the next level. We brought on Ruler out of the Yale Center of Emotional Intelligence. Ruler aims to infuse the principles of emotional intelligence into the immune system of pre-K to 12 schools, informing how leaders lead, teachers teach, students learn, and families support students. If you ever see a mood meter or hear of a student talking about a meta moment, this is straight out of our work with Ruler. The SEL committee also wanted to dive into restorative practices. We brought in a local organization called Umoja. They have been working in the Chicago Public Schools as a resource to help them transform their discipline practices for years. They've provided our staff training and they've provided our restorative justice subcommittee consultation. They have worked closely with our SEL coordinator and our deans on a way to infuse healing practices into our systems. The ROE from DuPage has since developed a relationship with the IIRP, International Institute of Restorative Practices, and we'll likely continue our journey on this topic with them. Through deeper learning, we also met our friends from Freedom Preparatory Academy, a network of public charter schools in Memphis, Tennessee. Mike Brown and Sanjata Salam, their directors, have been out to Fenton twice now. We were hoping to have them over the summer this past year, but we all know how that turned out. They worked with the entire staff on the topic of implicit bias. They then came back for a summer session where our other Chicago land schools joined us to dive deeper into culturally responsive and empowering practices. The next partnership is truly unique. We came across another local organization right here in Chicago called Second Story. We were trying to find experts to help our students develop stories during one of our summer literacy camps. What we found was an organization committed to equity and identity development through the use of storytelling. The power to build empathy in our world through this methodology is what drives them. They have worked with our teachers and our students and will continue to do so. For the past couple of years, at nearly every staff gathering, one or more of our staff tell their story to their colleagues. This has been one of the most profound sources of building empathy for one another and for our students we've experienced. Second Story has helped at least one of our staff members take their story to the actual stage, but more importantly, they've helped hundreds of our students develop their stories, and they've been able to publicly share these stories with staff and other students in storytelling exhibitions over the past two years. 
Next, we started our partnership with Dr. Yvette Dubio from the DuPage ROE. She has been an incredible resource for us. We just began our work with her last year, and we are looking forward to continuing this year. She worked with our DELT District Equity Leadership Team last year and took our school through a comprehensive equity audit. This year, she will help our DELT dive into the results of that audit and start developing strategies and actions. Next is the Attachment and Trauma Network. Last year, we sent one of our counselors, Nancy Connor, one of our social workers, Dio Velez, and one of our school deans, Pedro Castro, to a national conference hosted by this organization. I wouldn't call it a full-fledged partnership yet, but the work that Nancy and Dio have brought back from the, that conference to our school since then has been beyond valuable. Since the pandemic started, they have been putting out weekly tips on how to approach our work through a trauma-informed lens. They've also hosted community circles for our adults in the building. Considering this is highly traumatic experience for everyone, we want to support our teachers as well as our students. Finally, our newest partnership is with the Highlander Institute. We called them back in the spring for help with culturally responsive pedagogy because they offer a year-long, deep-dive, professional learning program grounded in continuous improvement. Then the pandemic hit. Since then, they've helped us with collecting our stakeholder voice and using this data to design appropriate distant learning plans for during the pandemic. We will get back to our culturally responsive teaching endeavor in the near future, as they truly are an organization focused on developing equity through teaching and learning. This journey so far has touched every single staff member in some way, and they've all been on a personalized journey through this work. Not everybody has taken an opportunity for intensive work, but those opportunities will continue to be offered. Whole school, mandatory trainings will be offered and optional activities and workshops will also be present. Our hope is that all of our staff will find truly meaningful ways to engage in this work of equity. And more importantly, as we move forward and provide opportunities for it, we hope that more of our various stakeholders will join us. I personally look forward to the action plans our district will develop to continue Fenton's equity journey. Professional learning will be just one aspect of that plan, but I have confidence that we are on the track and starting to move in the right direction. I wanna thank you for your time and please feel free to reach out to me with any questions. Take care.